Hey ghouls and creeps, I'm Britt and welcome to my channel where I do spooky DIY home and lifestyle content all year long. Today we're going to be recovering this chair with some really cool material that I got on the Spoonflower website. Let's get started. <laughs> Before we get into the deconstruction phase for this project, I always like to take a variety of photos with captions to refresh my memory on how to put things back together. For this step of removing staples to get the underlining and cover removed, I would definitely recommend investing in an upholstery staple remover. This tool would have been a whole lot more effective and frankly less dangerous than the standard screwdriver I decided to use. After a night of staple removing shenanigans, I jumped right in the following day by first removing the chair cover, or so I thought, as a novice to upholstery and upholstery techniques, I was blissfully unaware of the plot twist that was about to unfold. Because the underlining flap was so thin, this made the staples more flush with the frame of the chair, making it very challenging to get under them with the screwdriver. This is when I decided to go get scissors to cut the material around the staples to be able to remove the cover. I then began deconstructing the chair cover, saving the piping filler for the new cover, 
and marking names that made sense to me as well as indicators for the top and bottom on each piece. For those of you interested in ordering this material for your project, the material name is Watercolor Skull Moth Damask by the designer Rebel Form. And I found it on the Spoonflower website and ordered it in the Cypress Cotton Canvas option. I'll be sure to include a link for this down in the description. Now that we have the cover deconstructed, I started by marking the centers of my pieces. Since the material that I'm using is both large and directional, I wanted to match both my individual pieces with my print center, as well as attempt to make the print appear seamless between sewn together pieces of my cover. After determining that my piping material width was one and a half inches, I then cut my piping strips from scrap. This can be done on bias or straight of grain. Here you can see me cover that reclaimed piping and then attach it to my seat back and cushion edges. I then attach the seat and chair back sides to the corresponding pieces and then sewed my center seat seam complete with staple flap. Thank you. 
After some negotiating, I was able to wiggle the chair into the cover and then add some quilt batting to the front of the seat for extra fluffiness. I made small snips in the cover up to the bottom edge of the chair to be able to fold over and conceal that raw edge of material around the chair legs. I then stapled the cover to the chair frame, pulling the cover taut but not strained. Once finished, I then attached a new piece of underlining to the bottom. We did it! The chair flip is officially done and I can't wait to show you the end result. I'm super pleased with how this project turned out and I'm hoping that by watching me take on an upholstery project for the first time that will inspire you to take on a furniture flip project that you've considered doing. Let me know in the comments what piece of furniture you'll be flipping first because I love to hear how you all are being creative. I have a lot of fun videos coming up, so be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my little creepy craft corner of the internet. So thank you so, so much. Now, without further ado, let's get to the grand reveal.